This is History Talks, a Room 107 podcast number two with me, your host, Mr. S. We are broadcasting from atop the Llano Estacado in the heart of West Texas. We are coming to you from the number one school in LISD, a top school in the state of Texas, a top school in the United States of America, actually, Talkington School for Young Women Leaders. Joining me today are two Talkington rock stars who have made this school what it is. It is an honor and a privilege to introduce two eighth grade U.S. history students of mine, Caitlin Castle and Araceli Carlson. Ladies, how are you doing? Good. Good? Good. Speak up. Yeah. Okay. Y'all are doing good? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Y'all nervous at all? A little bit. A little bit. I promise this is just going to be a, just a normal talk about U.S. history stuff and everything will be good. Okay. Ladies, I want to start with a quick quote from an article. Okay. Just to let the audience know what we're going to be diving in today. Okay. Uh, so here's the quote. Abraham, Lincoln, uh, Abraham Lincoln's lengthy final goodbye made imminent Republican sense. A repetitive national farewell, a vast coordination of military and civilian officialdom, and of a fe- uh, elected officials at federal, state, and local levels, it celebrated Lincoln's love for the people and their love for him. Quote, love is a rare attribute in the chief magistrate of a great people, unquote, said P.D. Day, a Protestant preacher in Hollis, New Hampshire. In his address at the end of the funeral period, quote, we have so long regarded an iron will as the first requisite for a ruler that we have thought tenderness and love a weakness. But Mr. Lincoln has changed our views. He was beloved by the nation and they loved him because he loved them first. Ladies, in this podcast, in episode two, we are going to be talking about Civil War, Civil War casualties, how Lincoln was stolen from the American people, um, all those events of the Civil War. You and I just ended that part of U.S. history, so this should be fresh on your mind. You all ready to start? Okay. So, ladies, we're going to start with number one here. Um I want to start with this kind of broad, big view question, okay? You breathe free air. Ever since you and I were born, we have breathed in free air, okay? We were born into a country that was a superpower or that is a superpower, okay? Um, We were born into a country where the American people get along. We love each other as neighbors, as countrymen. We live together, as you know, in relative peace and harmony, Um, But ladies, looking back at the Civil War and even going back to sectionalism, the country breaking apart, right? It almost seems inconceivable. It doesn't seem real that the United States of America could break apart, that we went through this time. It almost seems like a Hollywood movie a little bit. As a young American citizen living in 2023, 170 years removed from the Civil War, when you first learned about that the United States of America will break itself apart, what was your initial thought about this time period? Um, Araceli, what did, what did you think? Um, I mean, I thought that it was coming. I mean, it had to happen at some point going to sectionalism. I mean, we were, everyone had different things. I mean, we all believed in different things. And it's crazy about all the details and deaths like we've learned about. And I yep. thought that it was actually a lot less brutal than it was. But yeah, I mean, I, I had the feeling it was coming. So. so I'll be honest, public school does not allow us to get into the hardcore brutality, but it was brutal. Um, you just said a second ago, you knew it was coming. What do you mean by that? I mean, you could just tell by like the way that the people really like had completely different ideas and had different, the different economies, the different, just everything was different. So you think the United States... Through sectionalism, we were always going to end in a civil war with bloodshed and violence. There was not going to be any peace. Yes. Okay. Uh, Caitlin Castle, what do you think? As as an American citizen living in 2023, when I told you that the United States actually broke apart, states left the union. They formed their own country, quote unquote. They elected a new president. The Confederacy wrote their own new constitution. We killed each other to end slavery, to save the country. What was your initial thought when you learned about that the country broke apart? Um, I initially thought the Civil War was going to be a chaotic period because of the tensions raising between the North and South with the issue of slavery and free and slave states. Okay. Um, but I didn't realize this war was going to be 
become like one of the bloodiest conflicts ever fought in American soil and all of the events that happened within it. Did it seem like when not, when y'all learned that a civil war happened, does it, from y'all's perspective in 2023, growing up in a free country where we love each other and this idea of civil war, like what, we killed each other in our own backyards? Did that seem real to you? Did it seem almost fake that this happened like a Hollywood script when you first learned about it? Mm, not really, to be honest. Okay. Uh, I think even though like America is known for like being like a very lovable country, like we all respect and love each other. I definitely think we both sides definitely have a lot of strong opinions. Okay. And so I can see how it can get to the point where the people kill each other. You think so? Okay. Definitely. Aricella, you agree or disagree with that? Yeah, I agree. Okay. Ladies, let's go on to number two. Um, Again, as I was just mentioning, it is really hard in public school because this is not a college level class, right? Like I have to teach you certain things. But one thing that I really wanted to drive home with y'all, even though LISD, you know, we don't have to get too much into the numbers and into the casualties, but I wanted to do that so y'all can make this a real thing. Um, Lays, I asked y'all to look at a chart in your notes right there in your prep document. And this is just some of the American casualties that occurred in the battles of the Civil War. Now, remember, we're not fighting Nazis. We're not fighting ISIS, Al Qaeda. We're not fighting Great Britain. We are fighting each other here, right? So let's just take a look um, at some of these numbers, okay? In one battle at Vicksburg, almost 20,000 American casualties. At a battle called Antietam, you and I talked about, right? The bloodiest day in American history, 23,000 casualties in eight hours. 29,000 American casualties at a battle called the Wilderness. Uh, at Gettysburg, 51,000 Americans. You and I did this little exercise where I had you count. Remember that? It took us forever to get to 25. Imagine counting up to 51,000 souls in that one battle. Please, when you see how many Americans died in this war fighting each other to end slavery, to save the union. What, when you see these numbers, what did y'all think? Caitlin, start with that one. Um, I think of all the American casualties that lost their lives fighting for the Civil War. And I wonder how br brutal the war must have been. Um, the Civil War was one of like the de deadliest battles in American history with like more men dying than any other conflict. Okay. Uh, Araceli, what did you think? Yeah, I mean, it's crazy to think that so many people died and were killed because of slavery and we killed each other. And again, I think this uh, this was going to happen at some point in one way or another. But yeah. Do these numbers seem, I mean, can y'all imagine us doing this to each other with those amount of casualties? Well, I mean, at first I was going to say no, but now that I think of it, like we're getting to a point where like it's just everyone against each other. And I mean, I could kind of imagine not necessarily these big of numbers, but definitely like some fights like that are big. Okay. So you just said you see something happening now. What do you mean by that? I mean, well, I was talking about it more in one of my other questions, but like okay. racism has become a really big thing now okay. and all the school shootings is getting horrible. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. So y'all are starting to feel some angst, some nervousness. One of my questions is kind of about that. So we'll dive into that in a second. Okay. All right, ladies, let's go to the next one here. Um, let's talk about Lincoln for a second. Okay. Um, in his second inaugural address, I want to read you a quote that he did. And to me, this is, you know, one of the quotes that, that really stands out. He said, with malice toward none and charity for all. So in other words, hatred for nobody and love for all as the civil war is ending, right? As he's trying to get us back together. Okay. Let us bind up the nation's wounds. Think about that quote for a second. And I want y'all to really understand how incredible and astonishing is it to you that Lincoln did not want to punish the South after the civil war, but instead he wanted to welcome them back in a way as countrymen. Okay. Um, how incredible is that? Think about it. The Confederacy ripped the country apart, right? Most civil wars, the loser ends with their heads on spikes, right? Being executed in the most horrific way. But our civil war is different. Lincoln said, no, let the boys go home. Remember that, right? After Appomattox, okay? And I just think how, how did this man not want to bring more chaos, 
hurt, sadness, destruction to the country. Let them go home. Did y'all find that incredible and astonishing that Lincoln said, boys, go home? What do you think about that? I mean, I thought it was incredible. I, I mean, I definitely don't think I could have done that. Okay. Um, but I also think he did it because he finally wanted peace. And he, he wanted it. He wanted the union to be united. And so, yeah. I, and I mean, yeah. Okay. Kaylin, why do you think um, or how incredible is it to you that Lincoln did not want to punish the South? He wanted to welcome them back as countrymen. That has never happened in any civil war that I know of in world history. Like I said, it ends worse. The 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 loser, they get executed. They get imprisoned. Um, I mean, tortured to death. Lincoln said, "Boys, go home. We're we're countrymen again." What do you think about that? I definitely agree with Araceli. I personally, I I could not. <laughs> um, so if you were commander in chief, you could not be so, so malice toward about, none, charity yeah. for lenient. Okay. Exactly. Um, and I think Lincoln did this because he planned for Reconstruction to be based on forgiveness and peace. Okay. And I think the only way to truly end the war was by treating those who had fought uh, for the South with kindness. And I think if he would have punished the South, then it would have slowed down the nation's healing for more. Slow down the nation's healing. And my, my next question is, why did Lincoln do this? He wanted to heal the country, y'all think? Okay. Yeah, do you think absolutely. he knew that it had gone through too much? Yes. He wanted to heal it as fast. I mean, bind up the nation's wounds, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Lays a, a kind of a hypothetical. If he had gone a different way, if he had punished the South, if he had arrested Robert E. Lee, executed him, and put his remains on public display, which has happened in history before, do you think the country today would be a little bit different if Lincoln punished the South? What do y'all think? Would the nation be different today? Yeah, I think so? if, if you punish the South, then it would still be this endless cycle with rival rivalry between North and South because ah. they keep going back and forth with punishing. Okay, and, so and, the healing never would have happened. No. What do you think? I mean, I think like today it wouldn't have been much different. I think we would still be the United States. But I think the next like hundred years or so after that would have been different because it would have been two different countries and um, – but, yeah, I think everything would eventually come back to this. Okay. Um, ladies, before we get to um, the murder of a president here, as y'all see in y'all's prep doc, I have a an impromptu question, which means I did not want y'all to prep for this, okay? Um, and I wanted to get y'all's initial reaction to something. Okay. And this is kind of what Araceli mentioned earlier. Um, a couple weeks ago, a congresswoman, I'm not going to tell you her name. I'm not going to tell you what political party she is, but she is currently a member of Congress. Okay, um, She mentioned something and her tweet kind of went viral. Uh, maybe you all heard of this. Maybe you didn't. But she had mentioned something about that Americans are, are starting to want what she calls a national divorce where Republican red states go this way, blue Democrat states go this way, and instead of calling it secession, she calls it a natural divorce. You all with me so far? Okay. A, a polling company, okay, a, a legitimate polling company that presidents use, that uh, candidates use, right? Um, uh, the company's called Ipsos. They're a real company. Okay. They took that idea and they sent it out to the American people to get their view. Do you want a national divorce? Do you not? Like what did, what did the American people think? The, the results were crazy. I want to get y'all's reaction to the results. Okay. 20% of Americans say they want a national divorce. 20%. Of Americans right now living today say Republican states go this way, blue Democrat states go this way. You and I would call that secession. What do y'all think when you hear that? What's natural about splitting the countries up? Okay, true. What do you think? Oh, I think that's crazy. It I mean, is crazy. I could see it happening, but like, why would you want it? Like, that's, that's like we're a. I, well, I mean, what is y'all's initial thought when you hear that? Besides, that honest, that honestly makes me kind of sad. That sad. It kind of makes me sad that okay. people that we have so many differences that we're not even trying to work with ah. each other. We're just trying to split it up. Ladies, remember, I've told y'all since sixth grade, 
if y'all disagree with each other, that's fine, but you don't have to hate each other because y'all disagree, mm -hmm. right? Um, so sad and crazy, right? Yeah. Could y'all, okay, y'all's generation is gonna have to deal with this. My generation is gonna have to deal with this. Does this scare you? Does this frighten you? Does this make you anxious in a way? Does what, do those feelings pop up when you hear this? It bothers me. It scares bothers you, me. scares you. Yeah, I mean, if we split every, like all of our economy, I mean, I feel like it would just go down. Like it, it would ruin everything that we've let up. Yes, right. Create. Yes, I mean the United States is popular because we have all these different things and we're all different. We but yet yeah, there's variety. a uniting People, factor. Oh yeah, God, yeah, like cultures, like where everyone has religious freedom and we can do whatever we want, but we're all doing it together. Okay. And the way that people want it to separate is just crazy to that me. That's so, so disappointing. Okay. That is. Um, so that was my impromptu question. I wanted to get y'all's organic thoughts on that. Okay. Um, ladies, let's go to a very sad topic. As y'all know, um, I told y'all this was going to be a very powerful moment in class when we talked about the murder of a president. You and I did this very important minute by minute account, right, of Lincoln's path and John Wilkes Booth path they took that night. Um, and as you all know, I did a very graphic um, retelling of the story, and I did that on purpose because I want Lincoln to mean something to y'all. When you initially, because I'm sure y'all heard, you know, Lincoln was assassinated at Ford's Theater, right? But you probably never understood the way the bullet entered his skull, right? You've never heard those things, and that it will stick with you. When y'all first read and walked Lincoln's path that night, what were your initial thoughts about the graphic nature of his death and how he was taken um, from the American people? Casey, what do you, what was your initial thought about that exercise y'all did? Um, when I first read about the minute by minute account of Lincoln's assassination, I honestly felt disgusted. Okay. Um, because like, how could someone have so much hatred for someone who's willing to give their life for the country and who loved it? And it made me sad to hear that before Lincoln got shot by John Wilkes Booth, um, he was just laughing and enjoying life at Ford's Theater, and yep. then it was taken away from him. Okay. Mm -hmm. Araceli, when you first read that the, the, the minute by minute account of Lincoln um, and all the, the, the graphic things about his breathing, the last moments, again, I wanted to do that so it, it sticks with you forever. Um, what was your initial thought? about how he was taken from us here i mean initially i was like oh this has to be fake like the the many like coincidences and like red flags that were there right? i mean his do, wife do, telling him do you have one go. yeah his wife telling him not to go his bodyguard saying him oh, saying no. goodbye not good instead night. of good night that is so scary yeah it, it was just i i couldn't really it was crazy the different like from what i thought before i was just like oh he died it's not a big deal but now i'm like so why why like how could that happen like how is it actually like true right how could they when you yeah, yeah that's so um crazy. i am currently reading a book right now and this author is putting an argument out into history saying and he's giving some evidence about it. he's saying that lincoln knew somewhere in his psyche that he was going to die somehow by an assassin or, or he would be taken from the american people and that he almost became, he, he, he stopped fighting it in a way. So instead of not guarding himself against those red flags, he let it go because he knew it was his destiny. Um, so this author thinks that. Um, what do y'all think yeah, about that? Because yeah, so many red flags were happening. Yeah. You know, Mr. President, don't go. Um, and he, he, did, he made a joke about it. He, it's all, he knew... This had to happen in a way. Yeah. Do y'all feel that way? I agree. It could yeah. have been his gut feeling. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. knowing that, I see, like, why he forced his wife and his family to go to, like... She had a migraine that night, remember? Yeah. Forced his... Um, makes so much sense. Yeah, to go there because he wanted to enjoy his last last minutes, last time. Um, I don't know what I think about that. Um, it yeah. rings true a little bit, though. Yeah. That he, he knew it was going to happen, and he accepted it. And he couldn't do anything about it. And he accepted his, his fate that was coming. And he would definitely be the type of president to do that. I yeah. would agree. And if it's true, I mean, he's already, he'd probably think like, oh, I already done so much for this country. I mean, I, if I go now, I mean, there's not much more I could do, I feel like. 
we're about to get to that. Okay, Liz, let's go to the same. There's a second part to this question. Um, as I told you, I feel that Lincoln was stolen from us. Um, I feel like he was taken too soon. Um, quickly, what does he mean to you after you learned about him, Araceli? What does this man, he, he's not some guy on money. He's not some guy carved in marble in Washington, D.C. And by the way, when y'all go see that, um, and I want to go with y'all, by the way, I'm going to try to get Mr. Butler to let me go with y'all in four years. Um, but when you see his his memorial, it, it's, it's breathtaking. It will change your life. But he was flesh and blood. Um, what do you think? What does he mean to you? I mean, I think he was an amazing, awesome president. I, I think he could... If he would have lived longer, I think he could have topped George Washington, personally. I'm about to get there, too. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, I think uh, he definitely set at least somewhat of an example for other presidents. And um, his pe- his peaceful ways like are very inspiring. Okay. How he um, was just kind to everyone. And I think he has meant prosperity and unity, like acceptance for the United States and, I mean, hopefully the whole world. Yeah. Okay. Um, Caitlin, quickly, what does this man... Abraham Lincoln mean to you? Um, Abraham Lincoln was an inspiration because he believed in uh, equality for all people and he worked really hard to protect the rights of others. And he was willing to give up his life for the country and loved it dearly, just like any American should. Okay. And even though he had a lot of power as president, he treated others with honesty and grace. So like as an American citizen, I respect him very much. Okay. Um, Again, I did not want him just to be somebody that y'all learn about one time a year. Um, Some guy carved in granite. Uh, some guy on your money. I want him to mean more, and I hope uh, hope that he does to you. I have a follow-up question about that. Um, I don't know if y'all know this, but there's this guy named George Washington who – do y'all know about him? Did I, do y'all know about he him? He rings a bell. Rings just, a bell? Just a little bit. Um, do y'all know that he's my favorite? Have, uh, I, I mean, have I mentioned that before? I mean, it's uh-huh. not like he's just all over your room. <laughs> Wait, is that judgment? Or he's your screen on your computer hey. screen. Oh, yeah, he is. Okay. Um, so, he's obviously, Washington means a lot to me, but so does Lincoln. Um, I want to ask y'all a question. Um, Washington creates the country. Lincoln saves the country. Mm. Which one was harder? Saving the country. Saving it. Yeah. Why? I agree. Why? I think creating the country, I feel like every, not everyone, but like it could have happened in a lot of different ways. I mean, the way George Washington did it was great, but I feel like a lot of, so many of the different presidents we've had could have, I feel like, also done it the wow. right way. Well, there was also, like, there was nothing to lead by example. Trashing so, my so boy he, over here. I mean, he started it, but, I mean, this guy freaking yeah. said to yeah. two fun together. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, Caitlin, what do you think? Creating or saving was harder? Saving. Why? Because these two, the North and South have such strong opinions. And, like, doing, I don't mm-hmm. think anyone could do that today in this in this world right yeah. now, okay. no, yeah. no, that's not possible. Okay, so <laughs> so saving it. Saving it. Okay, sure. Liz, let's go on to the next one real quick. Um, as you know, Lincoln's gone during Reconstruction period. Um, y'all learned you you put that time period in your hands. Um, would this time period have been different if Lincoln was around to guide the country? Casey, what do you think? Yeah. Um, I think Reconstruction period after Civil War would have been a lot smoother if Lincoln had been around to guide and lead the country. I feel like his humble nature and his like compassion for others made him a great leader. And I think his death gave the radical Republicans more freedom to punish the South. So I feel like he would have came up with like a better solution okay. to that problem. Araceli? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I don't know how it would be different. But I think that the joining of the South and like the expansion of the U.S. was probably been easier and faster. Okay. And he would have probably gotten both sides to... Um, to understand him, and I think it would have gone a lot smoother, like Caitlin said. Okay. Um, I obviously think that if he had been around to guide the country through Reconstruction, it would have been way different. Now, hearts and minds will take a while to change. Obviously, the Confederacy, the South, right? Um, But I think with his leadership and him there, I think um, Reconstruction would have looked a lot different. Um, Liz, let's go to number seven, okay? This is kind of a controversial question, okay? Okay. Let me just read the first part. Obviously, slavery is a sin against human nature and God himself. Okay? Um, If we had to end it with bloodshed, so be it. Right? Lincoln even said that. 800,000 Americans died in the Civil War on the top end. There's there's differences. Some historians say 600,000. I believe it's 
closer to 800,000, okay? Um, we slaughtered each other in unprecedented numbers to end it, okay? To end slavery and to save the country. Um, some people today say that America did not pay its price yet, that America is not punished enough for slavery. 800,000 Americans died to fix that sin. It is the deadliest war in American history. Not World War II, not the War on Terror, not the American Revolution. The war to end slavery. More Americans died to end that. Do you think America paid the price for slavery? Araceli? I don't know. I mean, I think we kind of have because, it, again, like I've said, it had to happen at some point. Slavery has had to end. I mean, that's horrible. Absolutely. But it still needs to be addressed and talked about. I mean, like, sure. like I said today, um, how we need to treat everyone the same. And, I mean, it's, it, racism has become a huge problem lately. And we can't keep going backwards in time. Like, I've seen so many things of us. We just keep going backwards and backwards okay. and backwards. Kaylin, America's deadliest war is the Civil War. Some people say that America still hasn't been punished enough. 800,000 Americans died. Is that punishment enough or no? Yes and no. Okay. Because although we lost many American casualties during the Civil War to end the sin of slavery and we added new amendments to fix this huge problem, it's never going to take back what slave owners put the freedmen through. And mm -hmm. even though Civil War ended slavery, discrimination and racism is still a problem today in America. Okay. Okay. And, and again, I, I knew that y'all would be able to handle a controversial question like that, okay? Um, so thank y'all for, for answering that. Liz, let's go to the last question here. Number eight, um, I want to do a hypothetical. I want to put your shoes or yourself in Lincoln's shoes, okay? Um, if you were commander-in-chief, if you were president of the United States during the Civil War, would y'all have done anything different to bring the war to a close? Faster? Um Araceli, what would you, would you have done anything different? I mean, I don't know what I would have done since, like, there wasn't anyone to set an example of us fighting each other or really wasn't even any big wars. I mean, other than, I mean, obviously the Revolution and the French-American War, but still none of it was as big as this, obviously. Okay. Um, but, I mean, Link, of Lincoln's negatives, what I would have fixed is um, fired Mc McClellan earlier. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, there was so long that the Union lost under him, so I definitely would have done that. Um, I also would have probably not played offense the whole time, and I would have like used our advantages, like caught in, like their the way that they had to rely on the Europe European powers. I would have definitely like tried to stop that as soon as possible. Okay. And relying, um, and the way that we had a lot of people and factories, we could have like Beecher's Bibles was a huge thing that helped us a lot, and so. Okay, Caitlin, would you have done anything if you were commander in chief during Civil War to to bring it to a close sooner? or just have done anything different, period? Um, I honestly don't think I would have done anything differently um, bringing the Civil War to a, to a close sooner because I think Lincoln handled it well, and the Civil War wasn't something that could be resolved quickly. Okay. It was a lengthy and long conflict that needed time. Okay. Um, Liz, I have one regret oh. thing here. What would you have done? Me? Yeah. Um, that is that – is, so that's a tough question. I wish I had time to prep, uh, but I clearly don't. Um, I think that, do y'all remember um, Sherman's March to the Sea? Do y'all remember how Lincoln and Grant sent William Tecumseh Sherman, the most trusted general under Grant, to the South to completely destroy everything in his path, right? Mm -hmm. to, to cause terror in the South, to make sure that if you're going to fight the Union Army, you better think twice, mm -hmm. right? To basically break their spirit. I might have done that sooner yeah. to, you know, break the South spirit to say, this is not going to stand. This is going to be over quick and we will destroy everything in our path to stop it. I might, I might've done that sooner. Um, so one quick regret. Um, we had a technical difficulty at the beginning. It did not catch the first part of the recording. Okay. Um, um, that's a good question. I don't know. I think definitely questions one and two. It did not catch. So because of time, we got to go. Um, but uh, audience, this is episode two of History Talks. This was Caitlin Castle and Araceli Carlson joining me on number two. Ladies, what did y'all think? This was fun. It was. Oh did gosh, it get easier so as we went? I was scared, but that was, that was fun. I liked, okay, that was good. Fun. 
Um, awesome. Lazy, it was an honor and a privilege to have you on this. Your answers were incredible. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, that's it. We'll see you next time. I like the first part. I like that. I know. It's just, it's just.